Let's begin with the common definition of love. Love has been defined by psychology and Oxford languages as an intense feeling of deep affection. And evolutionary psychology has described love as an emotion that keeps people bonded and committed to one another long enough in order for them to procreate and for their kids to survive and reach sexual maturity. Now I'm fairly sure that most people would define love and true love in the sense of romantic love, which we can describe as feeling a similar attraction to another person and feeling happy because of them. And I would agree with this idea of romantic love being a longing for someone else to make us happy and complete, and as the longing for a soulmate. I myself, for example, experienced romantic love in high school when I felt attracted to a girl who was amazing at physics and math, which were all subjects that I was very bad at, as well as when I felt attracted to another girl who was simply nicer to me than all the others and who could make me feel happy. However, the problem that I currently see with focusing on romantic love is that we can not only become lustful and obsessed with the other person, but that we also run a much higher risk of becoming dependent on someone else to make us happy, instead of working hard in order to be able to make ourselves happy, which is a problem that can also occur when we rely on friends or family to make us happy. And I think that this dependency will likely hinder all people involved in the maximization of their potential especially in a romantic relationship and that therefore the relationship will not be as happy as possible and that the happiness might even fade away completely and therefore i also think that this dependency is one of the main reasons why a relationship based on romantic love might not be true love after all And I experienced this problem with my parents' marriage, where my mom depended in many ways on my dad's skills in business and finance, whereas my dad relied in some ways on my mother's emotional skills and empathy, such as listening to others and connecting with them on a much deeper emotional level. Simply put, they were complete opposites in many ways. And I strongly think that this mutual dependency could potentially have worked out great if only they focused on wanting to learn each other's different skills in order to turn themselves into a better and happier person. But unfortunately, they instead kept focusing on romantic love to be happy. And then over time, when they had found other ways to make themselves happy, for example, because of their hobbies, friends, or because of my brother and me as their children, the romantic love between them kept declining and declining over the years. And as the frustration over each other's inadequacies and unwillingness to change grew, they eventually grew apart and started living their separate life in the same house. And from then on, they pretty much only stayed together because of the complications of divorce and the well-being of my brother and me. And given the current high divorce rate in the world, I'm fairly sure that similar problems have occurred with most other romantic couples. And this dependency in a relationship based on romantic love is one of the problems that Simone de Beauvoir, an existentialist philosopher in the early 20th century, also saw with romantic love. And which was one of the reasons why she thought that romantic love was not a good basis for a happy and everlasting relationship. And this problem with romantic love was also one of the reasons why many other philosophers like Plato, Amit Abraham, Arthur Schopenhauer, Bertrand Russell and even Buddha claim that love is simply a trick of sexual desire, an escape from loneliness or a misleading affliction in order to get humans to procreate and then once this has been done to simply move on in a perpetual cycle of human drudgery. And I would agree in the sense that a relationship based primarily on romantic love isn't a good way to create a happy and everlasting relationship and that we therefore need to look for a better form of love to base our relationships on.
And right now, I strongly believe that this better form of love exists, a form which is much broader than in the romantic sense, and is the exact opposite of lust and obsession. Like I said in the beginning, I currently think that we can show love whenever we treat someone, including ourselves, in a way that provides everyone the best opportunity to maximize their potential. Or, as Simone de Beauvoir has put it, to reach beyond themselves. And that one of the best ways to provide this opportunity is to offer our unconditional support to help reach each other's goals. For example, by wanting to understand and help solve problems, by motivating each other to become wiser and stronger, and most importantly of all, by respecting, understanding and supporting the choices that might hurt us ourselves in the short term. Such as their choice to leave us behind, to see us less, or to simply find their own way for the moment, without us. And when we can support even these painful choices, then we can help them to grow even more, and we can also help ourselves to grow even more. And I think a great example of this form of love is this scene from the animated movie Beauty and the Beast, which I will show next. As in this scene, Beast understands and respects Belle's decision to leave him behind, all the while knowing that respecting her choice will mean that he will remain in Beast form and will be alone again without someone else to make him happy. And even though he knows that this decision will therefore hurt him greatly, he realizes that the best way to show his love for her is to respect and support all of her needs and wishes, including her wish to be with her father and leave Beast behind. And that even though Beast feels the pain from letting her go, because he doesn't know if he can be happy without her, he knows that Belle needs to be free in order for her to reach beyond herself. And perhaps in this scene, he subconsciously also knew that he needed to figure out how to become happy by himself, just like Belle had shown him, in order to reach beyond himself as well. Be here with me? Yes. What is it? If only I could see my father again. Just for a moment. I miss him so much. There is a way. This mirror will show you anything. Anything you wish to see. I'd like to see my father, please. <laughs> Papa! No. He's sick. He may be dying, and he's all alone. Then, you, you must go to him. What did you say? I release you. You're no longer my prisoner. You mean... I'm free? Yes. Oh, thank you. Hold on, Papa. I'm on my way. Take it with you. So you'll always have a way to look back. And remember me. Thank you for understanding how much he needs me. Well, Your Highness, I must say everything is going just swimmingly. I knew you had it in you. <laughs> I let her go. <laughs> yes, yes. Splend... You... What? How could you do that? I had to. Yes, but, 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 but why? Because 
I love her. And I think this form of love that Beast showed, which we can call true love, also contrasts brilliantly with Gaston's romantic and eventually obsessive love. Gaston, for example, wants to marry Belle because of her looks and status as the most beautiful girl in town. He wants her to become his little wife, and he even goes so far as to force her to marry him. And I think the best example of this contrast of these two types of love is Gaston and Beast's different reactions to Belle's passion for reading. Because when Gaston criticizes Belle for her passion for reading and even takes her book away from her, Beast, on the other hand, instead showed interest in her reading and wanted her to teach him how to read as well. And not only did Beast show this interest in her reading, he eventually even gave her a whole library of books so that she could further develop her passion for reading. And so together, Beast and Belle were able to help each other to reach beyond themselves and further maximize their potential because of one another, which is what I currently think to be true love. And I am as certain as the sun rising in the east that just like in real life, when we also follow Beast's example and show true love to our romantic interest, even if we need to live with the pain for the moment, that we will still have the best chance for a romantic relationship where we can live happily forever after. <laughs>